Hello everybody, I hope you're going well. Today I will teach you a tactical pattern that is called deflection. So what is deflection? Deflection is when there is a piece which is actually defending something and instead of eliminating the piece, we are disconnecting the piece that is defending something with the piece that we want to take. I will give you a very concrete example. Let's say for example that right now we really, really want to take that rook on f8. The problem is that the king is defending the rook on f8. Eliminating the defender would mean that right now a move, for example, uh, some, if, let's say there is a knight on e7, the knight would be able to take the king and then black does something. And then of course we will take the rook because the rook wouldn't have any defender. But deflecting is something else. Deflecting is when we disconnect the king with the rook right now. So you can pose and try to find the winning move. So the winning move is actually, you know, very easy once we understand the idea. The move is actually bishop h7, because it would be check, and if the king takes the bishop, we get the rook. Bam, bam, and then of course we grab the rook. Next example. So the next example is actually a little bit easier than that. Um, let's say that in that position, we really, 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 really want to do a promotion, d8 promotion. The problem is that there is a rook on d5, which is actually guarding the d8 promotion square. So what we have to do is to deflect the rook from the control of the d8 square. Once we understand who is the, who is the piece to deflect and we understand what we want to achieve, for example, d8 queen, we find the move. So pause and try to find a move. Okay, so the winning move is actually something very magical, rook g5. Because, because if the rook takes the rook, like we see, there is just d8 queen and the rook isn't protecting, you know, the d8 square anymore. And now we can just grab the rook. And this is just easy peasy winning. Another example. Let's say that in that position, we are better. Let's say we are better. The, th the thing that we really, really want to do is eventually using the fact that we have, you know, more pawns on the king's side. For example, we have a pawn on f6, which is attacking one of the squares nearby the black king. Now, since the pawn is attacking one of the squares, we really, really want another pieces to eventually attack the g7 pawn. So, Let's say we see that the, we want queen g4 attacking this, the g7 pawn with checkmate. The problem is that the queen can potentially take the queen. So let's say we think about rook e8 first, black takes back, and then we go queen g4. The problem is that there is queen f8 and there is no more attack. Uh-huh, so I see that I try to deflect the queen from d7 to e8 to play queen g4, but it didn't help us. Oh, but wait, I see that the queen is also defending the rook and not only the g4 square. So once I understand that, I understand that after queen g4, queen takes g4, I have rook takes rook with checkmate. So that is why queen g4 is the best move. We are threatening the g7 pawn, so black has to do something about it. And if black takes our queen, we will take the rook for example, g6, and we take the queen right now. Again, if black have ta had taken uh, like that, we would be able to just take the rook for free. So now that you do understand, you know, this idea of deflection, um, let's see some other examples that are also pretty difficult. So in that position, we have a very common position uh, in open games. It is a position in which the two queens are facing each other. But notice that it is white's turn to move. If, if it was black's turn, black would actually take the queen and trade the queens off the board. But the thing is, black is already up a piece, so white doesn't want to take the queen. But wait, the king is defending the queen, so it means that we have a chance to, eventual, to eventually deflect the black king from the defense. We can pause and try to find the best move. Exactly. The best move is actually bishop f7 check. Because it is check, the king cannot stay, you know, nearby the black queen. And once the king takes the bishop, we can just grab the queen. So notice how easy it is to understand that there is a deflection possible. Every time you notice that a piece is defended by another piece, there must be a deflection. You know, if there is nothing, it's not a problem. Uh, but once you see that two pieces are defending each other, look at deflections. Um, and of course, look for, you know, eliminating the defender type of stuff. Okay, now, 
in that position, I do see that I have a rook and a queen on the h file. So, since I'm attacking the h7 square, the question is, what is stopping me from going for a checkmate? I see that the queen on e7 is guarding the h7 square. Okay, so what can I do? Taking on g6 is dubious, the rook can just take my queen. Um, but I also do see that I have another rook on f1, so let's look for checks. I see that queen h7 isn't doing, isn't doing anything, this is not doing anything either. I see that if I go queen f8, the black queen can just take the queen and then I have to take back, the king takes and I'm just... Upper, I just have a rook against two rooks and a bishop, so it's definitely losing. But wait, I see that the queen is not only defending the h7 square, but also the f8 square. The question is, can I deflect the queen from the defense of the f8 square? No, because if queen h7, king takes, I'm sorry, queen takes, there is no more rook f8 checkmate. Black can just take the rook. But it, it works the way around. Boom, rook f8. I'm going for a check. Black has to take it. And then, of course, queen h7, checkmate. So notice that once you do understand the pattern, you can actually find this type of moves everywhere. You just have to look for them. Once you know that it exists, you can just use that. If you have any more questions about anything, just let me know in the comment section. It was a very high pleasure to answer your questions. Subscribe to the channel. Like always, support the channel by sharing, liking, and telling me in the comment section what is good, what is not good. Hopefully, uh, you will find joy in this YouTube channel. Thank you very much. See you in the future.